Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be playing some Atari. Um, yeah, I love playing Atari. <laughs> uh, it's probably one of the better, you know, live things I, I like to do. You know, sometimes I do uh, Nintendo. I'm, I really want to do a, a Sega one at one point, you know, doing some Sega Genesis or Master System or something like that, just to break it up hey a bit. And, uh, you know, just to uh, add some to it. Anyways, let's see if anybody's in the chat. Hey, X Annihilate, what's up? I haven't decided when I want to play yet. Oh, James Campbell's in here. What's going on, buddy? Let's uh, let's think here. What can we play? Lots of games. Always too many choices. But I think that's why I like doing the Atari one because uh, you know, some some systems it's. There's not so many games I like to play, or... Oops. I don't want that. Uh, I was thinking of playing maybe some... Let's see here. Dig Dug. This Dig Dug is just a classic Atari game. Not much relaxing before bed. Oh, hold on. I always forget to do this. I always forget to turn the volume down on my own so I don't go deaf. <laughs> there we go. Papa Pete! Just stopped long enough to say hello because it's time for the old guy to get some sleep. Yeah! You know, it's... it's. Uh, I think a lot of us need to get some sleep now. <laughs> but I just felt like I should be doing some Atari games. I, I haven't, uh, you know, done a live stream like this in a while and... I was going to do it earlier today, I just didn't get around to it. There's just too much going on. One day I'd love to play this on the Intellivision. It's a little bit more of an expensive title, I think, for the Intellivision. I think this is the one that, on the Intellivision, there's a way to, uh, play some kind of... What was it? Was it the Burger Time thingy? I remember something with the Noseware Gamer. And he showed some trick. Yeah, it was, um... Pretty sure it was the Intellivision Dig Dug. And then you can do some trick to play the Tron Deadly Discs with the uh, characters from Burger Time. I haven't done an Intellivision stream in forever. Well, actually I've never done an Intellivision stream. I don't have the ability to stream in television right now. Um, I, can, I, I have an emulator, but I can't get any of the games to really work properly on it. And probably, well, maybe I did the... Um, the D2K stream. That might have been the only Intellivision stream I would have done. And uh, that was just playing the D2K, which is the only game I can seem to get to really work. All the other games just don't seem to boot up on the emulator I have. And because I'm not uh, set up to play off my original hardware, I can't connect my Intellivision up and stream from that yet. You know, I'd have to get a. I have to work on my setup to do that. I have to get a, a different kind of setup. I wouldn't be able to do that in my office. Thought you had a working emulator. Yeah. Well, it's weird because the emulator works for some games, but a lot of them don't work. And it's what I've noticed is like I can, I can find like maybe one or two games that'll work. Most of them don't even boot up. Now, I know the Atari creep, he, he's got a setup that he uses for in television. Um, but he's on a different computer. He's, he's on a Mac. And uh, there's a different emulator for the Mac. And I'm on a PC, so... My Intellivision emulator on my Xbox is a little tricky to get to work. Yeah, I, I don't know why. What, what's, what's up with Intellivision being so tricky? The thing is, too, I mean, the, the other thing I don't like about playing in television on the emulator is I really like using the Intellivision controllers when I play in television games. 
especially when it requires all the buttons, like playing Utopia or something, and, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, where it requires the proper buttons, and playing it on a, on a PC with a gamepad, just, uh, I don't know. Like, I know they got those, um, in television classic things. I got, a, like, a couple of those on my PlayStation and stuff. But I, I, I kind of have the same problem. You know, using a PS2 controller to play in television isn't, uh, isn't always the best way to do it. I mean, Atari's fine, because Atari doesn't... It, it only requires, like, you know, the joystick and a button. You don't need all those, you know, keypad buttons. Um, I did do a stream with ColecoVision games, but again, ColecoVision, beyond the uh, start screen, there isn't, you know, many ColecoVision games that require the constant use of the keypad. Not like the Intellivision did. The Intellivision really worked that keypad. Uh, ColecoVision had a, you know, few titles that demanded the, uh, the keypad, but... You can play a lot of the classic games like Donkey Kong and all that. You don't need the keypad. You just need it to start the game. So yeah, obviously the best way to do it would be to use a capture card, get the Intellivision actually plugged into the computer properly, and then it would just be a case of switching cartridges. <laughs> I'd have to have all my cartridges ready or something, I don't know. I think that's the other thing I like about using an emulator when you're live streaming, is you don't have to fiddle around with cartridges. Yeah, Mousetrap. That's, that's one of the ones that uses the uh, keypad. And it really sucks if you don't have the little uh, overlay thing, because then you kind of have to guess what the numbers do. I don't think I have any of the overlays on my for any of my ColecoVision games. I, I, well, maybe I have one. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know they came with the flashback. I got the ColecoVision flashback, and it came with some overlays. <laughs> In television, capture and streaming has been my goal, but I've just been too it's so damn lazy. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, it's 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 not oh, it's not just the money issue. It's also getting the proper setup, and uh, you know, like my my man cave is actually in the basement of my house and where I do the streaming is on my computer and that's on the top floor of my house so it's really just like I'd have to decide do I want to move everything up here or do I want to move the computer downstairs but I mean that would just be a pain so unless I get another computer one day like a second computer that I could use just for streaming and get that set up in the basement and then get a capture card and then I can you know, do the proper setup, but I, I don't, you know, it's, I don't really have the room to just start dragging all my consoles and my, my games up, up into the office area where I do my live streaming right now. So that, that's probably why I haven't really put too much focus on it uh, just as yet. And I can, you know, I'm, I'm, I have fun streaming just the uh, Atari games and, you know, Nintendo and, like I said, I want I want to try a Sega one one day. I'm not well versed in a lot of the Sega games, so it would be interesting to try it. And I've done ColecoVision, which also is fun too. I just find that Atari has a lot of the, the classics that everybody really likes. Like this game. Oh. Back here. Oh. I always envisioned hooking the original in television to a VCR, then out with RCA to an HDMI adapter, then to my Elgato still in box. Remember the lazy statement? Then to my laptop and bang. That's a lot of uh, systems that you have to use there to do some streaming. 
I mean, there's also the uh, the old-fashioned way of you know just holding the holding your camera up to the to the TV kind of thing. Uh, my only problem with that is, is then you gotta really deal with the uh, with the comments and all that, and uh, it's also harder to control the camera when you do that. To make sure your camera doesn't go out of focus and all that. I mean, I do that for my videos because I'm able to control it, and then afterwards I can do a little bit of editing and I can do some zooming. And if it doesn't turn out, I could scrap it and try again. But when you're live streaming, it it gets a little complicated when you wanna kind of do the whole camera to the TV thing, because you never know when when the camera's gonna start spazzing on you, and it's just, it's just a lot harder. Another option is the ultimate flashback television flashback mod. The his pages in the Atari age. He's not doing them at this moment. I'm waiting. Ultimate flashback and television flashback mod. Sounds interesting. Well, I've talked to uh, the programmer for uh, was it Jay Z INTV and. Um, you know, I talked to him about trying to get my emulator to work. He's the guy who created the emulator, and uh, he also created the emulator for the Intellivision Lives and all that. Um, but uh, I, I still like. I, I think it's just an interface that, that I'm missing. So the emulator is, is kind of running in the background, but you need like some kind of interface to make it work. Uh, it's going over my head at this point. <laughs> oh, I also have an Atari 5200. Um, emulator, but I don't have a lot of the games for it that I've downloaded. I, I, I'm not way, you know, well versed in the 5200. I didn't grow up with it, so it's just, you know, just one of those systems that I didn't get a whole lot of familiarity with. Let's play some David Crane's Fishing Derby. And I enjoyed playing this on my uh, PC. Alright, here we go. Ah, you shark. I always lose. Crawl is still your favorite. Yeah, I, 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 I've been meaning to really learn how to play that one. I tried playing it and I was kind of lost. I didn't really know what I was doing. I think I remember seeing the Nosewear Gamer play it on one of his videos, but... I didn't actually try it myself at the time. It's not one of those games where you can just kind of like slap it in and just start playing it without knowing what's going on. It's kind of, uh, you, you really got to read the rule book. I think it's even based off the movie. I don't think I've actually seen that movie. Not sure. Try and get some of those bottom feeding fish. Uh, it takes a flashback, swaps the board with the Raspberry Pi, maintains full original television controllers, adds an SD card slot for the ROM. Uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's like basically building a modern uh, television that plays kind of like what the uh, you know what they what they tried to do with those the the flashback uh, or not the flashback the what is it the um, Hyperkin systems, like the uh, the one that's the heck was it called? Ah, fifty. The Retron. That's what I was trying to think of. The Retron. Retron seventy-seven. I think it was called. Where it actually plays like actual Atari carts and all that, and it has an SD slot. I was really curious about that, but I've I've never actually seen seen one in the store before, so I heard they're kind of hard to get your hands on. You can handicap the computer on this by giving him hard mode and you easy. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. I don't know what settings I'm on right now, though. 
the that's the other downside. I, I think I've said this before with the emulators. The downside with using an emulator is you don't see the buttons, so you don't know if you're on uh, B or A or where where you're set at. You just kind of have to push them and hope you're in the right button. I've still been meaning to do this too. I think like Papa Pete was saying, I'm kind of lazy. I need to, I need to create a little cheat sheet to put in front of my keyboard so I know what the buttons are. So if I ever need to know what the uh, difficulty switches are. Look at this, I'm doing horribly. E.T. always gets the hate for the licensed game on 2600. I always felt the Raiders of the Lost Ark it was also worse. Yeah, well, Raiders is is another one of those. Uh, a lot of people, t it t took a long time before they really understood what was going on with Raiders. And it's weird that it does require two controllers to play it. Almost like you do need two people to collaborate just to play it. Otherwise you have to hold the, you know, keep both controllers. But what, I mean, they, they really tried to stick to the storyline, and I, I think that that was good, like, you know, instead of just making some generic game, like a Pac-Man clone or something for E.T., which he could have clearly done. I mean, he could have just made a, a Pac-Man game and just made the E.T. head walking around eating Reese's Pieces instead of, uh, you know, pellets, and he could have passed that off as an E.T. game, no problem. But he decided, no, 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 they want, or, well, maybe Atari decided, but they wanted the game to be like the movie, so. If only we had actually completed all the little plans and ideas we have. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Let's see, what else is there to play? Freeway, yeah. Okay, I'm terrible at this game, but uh, let's play it anyways. Since it's starting to get cold where I live and winter's on its way, well, I mean fall just started, but we all know when fall starts, it's the beginning of winter. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Ah, I fell in. You play a round of bowling. Oh yeah, bowling. I haven't played that in a while. That'd be a fun one. Hey. Some people can get pretty impressive scores on this game. Alright, take care, Papa Pete. Thanks for coming in. Get some well-deserved rest. Like we all need. Ah. Carlsberg! <laughs> hey, how's it going? What game am I playing? This is called, um... Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. It's called Frostbite. You're out in the cold, trying to build an igloo before you freeze. Fun little Atari game from Activision. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, okay. Not me. You could beat me at this game. What, James? James has a hard time in this game? <laughs> Usually James is, is way, way better at Atari games than I am. Some people can just, like, rip through this game like nothing. I finally get to a point where I'm, like, lost. I just keep falling or I just keep getting killed. Uh, like this. You pretty much have to jump on these, uh, white squares. And, uh, I guess you're collecting snow or ice or something to build your igloo. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the instruction manual says this guy's trying to really do. Oh, no! 
And you have to avoid those things. Yeah, I can get past level 2. This I suck. Yeah, I think I actually did a, a Watch Me Suck at This Game video on this game before. Let's try this one more time and then play some bowling. Bowling's fun. We all like bowling. You know what I need to do? I need to sit down and play some Intellivision bowling. I probably haven't really given it a shot in a long time. I should do that. I just love how the, the bowling on Intellivision is like completely different than the one on Atari. Bounce, bounce, bounce. You know what I haven't done in a long time is any of my comparison videos. I haven't done, uh, you know, comparing Atari to Intellivision. Maybe I should do that instead. Whoa. Television bowling is so hard. Yeah, because there's a lot of options and stuff. You have to, like, and, and you have to, like, put in a handicap and all that stuff. It's not straightforward. <laughs> it's kind of like the golf game. Uh oh. If only this guy could jump from side to side, not just up and down. I think you can. I think the one thing I always forget you can do is jump on a diagonal. Yeah, Jeff is frostbite exactly, and I'm not doing too well. <laughs> I think that's what I always forget you can do is is jump on a diagonal. Of course, you got to be good at that too. Hey, it's Jacob Dowdy too. What's going on? Oh yeah, once the hole is there, you can go in. Uh-oh, that's the one with that polar bear now. So you can't stay at the top for very long because that polar bear will eat you. Kind of forces you to go out there. And then when you get your, your igloo, you can't just run right up because he's right there. Oh, crap. What am I going to do? I feel like I'm playing Frogger at this point. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> I like being eaten by a polar bear. Crap, there he is again. Oh, there's a fish. I think you can touch those fish or something. Uh-oh. Uh. Uh. Oh. He just booted me off the screen. Uh-oh. Uh, no! Oh. The bird. The bird is the word. Oh, and I got the... Oh. If I only just did two jumps there. Uh, I was totally like... Oh. Well. Let's see here. Bowling. Bowling. Not boxing. Pass it. There it is. Here's bowling. I don't think there's a difference. Oh, that's the pal. I don't want pal. I think the pal ones are uh, screwed up. I don't know. I know there's options on this one. I can't remember what they are. There's like some that let you actually manipulate the ball. I think that's the one I'm playing. So you can actually, uh, once you let go, you can kind of push up and manipulate the ball while it's moving. I thought that that was kind of weird when I when I first played this. I'm like, isn't that kind of odd that you can, once you let go of the ball, you can kind of control it? 
Like it's a uh, remote control ball or something. But I guess they did that because they didn't really have any other way to reposition the character to do any kind of different uh, swing. And that's what they do on the Intellivision. They kind of give you the, uh, the ability to manipulate the way the player throws the ball. Whereas this one is just more straightforward if, uh, just line your shot up. Sort of like when you play Wii Bowling, where it gives you the option of how you want to kind of handicap yourself to, to play the ball, you know, when you get a little bit of a spin on there. There we go. <laughs> Drive the ball. You can even like go like this and then drive it up and try and knock out all the pins. But you know, I'm sure a lot of us when we play real bowling and we throw the ball, we're, we're all kind of like doing this whole, like trying to get the ball to move, like using our Jedi powers or something. <laughs> Not really getting a uh, strike anywhere. That's setting number three. <laughs> oh, I angled it too fast. I still remember playing um, a little handheld bowling game too. I think I might actually have it. I don't know if it still works though. It was kind of like those Tiger Electronic ones. It wasn't made by the same company. It wasn't Tiger Electronics, I don't think. But it was back when those things were really popular on the shelf. When you would always see those Tiger Electronics. Hey, strike. What a little white handheld games. I remember playing a bowling one all the time. But it didn't give you any options like this. It was literally just line up your shot. Oops. I don't know. I can probably do better than that. Strike! Aw. Oh. <laughs> Strike! <laughs> Pick up that spare. Yeah. One pin. Doo -doo. I'm pretty certain no, I was one of those people that was sold for the Wii, like sold on the Wii just for the Wii bowling. I think Tommy Tellerico mentions that a lot. A lot of people bought the Wii for Wii Bowling. <laughs> it was like all the other sports titles are just a bonus that you get with it. I didn't mind the tennis tennis Wii thing, but the golf wasn't too bad. A little bit, a little bit tricky. You know, you're like swinging this imaginary club. It just felt kind of weird. Definitely not one of my more favorite golf games. I think I still like the NES Open. No. Okay, I don't think I'll be able to pick this up. But, eh, whatever. Definitely much more fun to play this with a human player. I love Wii Bowling. I was obsessed with it for a while. I've heard, though, like, some people just get a knack for the for the Wii Bowling, where they can just, like, constantly get strikes. Like, they just figure out the way to, to properly do the, you know, the holding of the Wii Mote. And they would just, like, strike after strike. How many people bought new TVs after playing bowling? Hey, it's Mr. Toon! Mr. Toon just picked himself up a nice Atari flashback for 30 bucks. 
Hopefully I can find one somewhere around here at that price. They're still, uh, they're still selling them at the uh, local Walmart around where I live for a hundred. It's that new Flashback, uh, Flashback 9. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to pay a hundred dollars for a Flashback system, but that's too much money. Especially when I know they're literally just an emulator in a box. And I have a Flashback 8, which, you know, honestly, I don't use it too much, but uh, if, if I had a Flashback 9, I'd probably use it more for the fact that you can use the SD card in it and load some ROMs on there. And then I can play it on my TV with an actual Atari joystick. <coughs> I can ship one out for you. We can work yours. Well, you know, shipping, though, might be a little bit crazy. It probably would equal just buying a dang thing right off the shelf. <laughs> Like once once you get into the shipping costs and we're both Canadians so we know what the shipping cost is like. My store has plenty left. Well, first I'll see, you know, maybe um, maybe the Walmart or wherever will have them on sale. I don't know. I tried to get my hands on the C sixty four mini because I know that dropped in price. But um, when it dropped in price I went to the Walmart and they still had them at regular price there. And, I, like, I probably could have, you know, taken it to the customer service guy going, hey, you know, this is dropped in price everywhere, can you drop the price? But I didn't feel like doing that. I was like, whatever. Let's just, uh... Let's forget. I, I didn't need it that bad. I just thought it would be something cool to have. Not to mention that they're going to make a new one with a, with an actual working keyboard. I don't know how that's going to work, though. I'm, I'm really curious about that one. Because, um... You know, at this point, they're almost just like rebuilding a, a, a freaking Commodore 64. So I don't know how it's going to work with the keyboard, or why why they they feel they need the keyboard on there. Um, my Walmart has them for 79.99 instead of 99. Yeah, Walmart doesn't always get with the uh, program. By the time um, by the time th they they catch up to the market, it's too late. I don't play this game enough, Defender. I don't know why. Even the, uh, what was it? The, the PlayStation... What was it? The, the PS Mini or PlayStation Mini or something? What was that, that PlayStation that came out where everybody was talking about how bad it is? <laughs> the crappy decision they made on the games? And, uh... When, when all the other stores were dropping the prices down to like 25 bucks or something, like under 30, my Walmart was still selling them for like 80. I'm like, didn't you guys get the memo? Like, this system is worth nothing? And <laughs> I think you're going to have to pay people to take them. Like, that, that's just wrong. <laughs> you still got like the original $80 PS1 Classic. That's right, yeah. Lots of people hate this game, but I love it. Defender? Really? People hate Defender? Yeah. You know, I, I don't mind it. You know, I, I kind of like the... Um, I like some of the other games that are similar to it better. I don't play the classic Defender enough, though. I really should, you know, give it a shot on some of the other systems, too. I think I think I prefer the, uh, the Empire Strikes Back or... Even to some degree, the He-Man game is like this one, isn't it? The Masters of the Universe. And there's Chopper Command. It's just your classic shooter game. Shoot 'em up. I never bothered to even look at the top map thing. I, I just kind of shoot with the, whatever the hell comes into the screen. I hate this version of Defender. Yeah, it, I, it's not it's not the greatest. 
a lot of flickering going on. I don't know if that's emulation or if that's the way this game always looks with the flickering, but... Sometimes it could just be uh, emulation that creates more flickering than necessary. This is another one of those games. You kind of play it for a little bit and you kind of get bored. Yeah, I figured as much. I mean, there's a lot going on in this game. Usually when there's a lot going on in an Atari game, you're going to get flickering. It's the way that the, uh, the system is able to draw the characters and stuff. You can only have, like, so many things on the screen at once before everything starts going all crazy. A lot of these uh, enemies look pretty crappy, too. I don't know if they're supposed to look like that. But they don't make any sense when you're looking at them. Oh. Yeah, that, that was not fun at all. <laughs> Moving on. What haven't I played in a while? Oh, you know what? Another one I always like to play every every few uh, streams is uh, Prince's Rescue, because I always want to see if I can get further. I always have a hard time on this game. I always like to see if I can get further than when I last played it. This is another one of those games I'd love to, to actually play on a real system one day. Even if I can, you know, whether I get like a flash card or maybe a repro of it, I wouldn't mind either one. I don't know, I've been trying to convince myself I need to like get a, a flash card, but uh, I don't know. One thing about this is, is you don't don't try and play it like you're playing on on the uh, you know the real Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo. The movement is just not the same. Uh oh, I think I'm running out of time or something. I need to see if there's a manual scanned online somewhere. Because I know this plays a little bit different than, than the real Super Mario Brothers. The way the coins and all that work, so... As much as this is, is tries to be kind of a clone... killed to have this game when I was a kid though. When I had when I had my Atari and I still didn't have it a a Nintendo. I would have killed to have this. I didn't have anything remotely close to Super Mario Brothers. I think I had uh, my Keystone Capers game was like probably the closest I would have had. Kind of exciting is uh, that the uh, programmer who made Keystone Capers, his uh, brother, is is working on a sequel, and it's going to be released. I'm not sure when though. Like he's he's got his website up. I was talking to him on Facebook, and he said just uh, to follow along with the the website. But um, he said he's working on getting a sequel to Keystone Capers, so it's kind of neat. Can't wait to see what they're gonna... I mean, I think they have pictures of it on the website. 
think you have to go to dankitchen.com. Dart! Did I just lose? Oh, That was terrible. But yeah, if you go to dankitchen.com, I think it is, you can learn about it. But yeah, Keystone Caper is one of my favorites. Just sitting in a trash for treasure, chilling watch, Brian. Play some old school Mario. <laughs> yeah, you can't get any old school than that. Well, you can with Donkey Kong. And let's see here. No, I, I don't want to play Chase the Chuck Wagon. No, 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 no. How about Pitfall? Everybody loves Pitfall. Pitfall, Harry! Let's see how far I can get. Another one of those games where to really uh, to really play this game properly, you should map the bloody thing out. And there has been some people who have done it. Actually, uh, Atari Creep talks about someone who does. I forgot his name again, but uh, one of the uh, YouTubers out there mapped this whole game out so he could play it properly. <laughs> Because you really are supposed to use the underground path, but you have to know when. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Why does the drawn version of you have no ears or legs highly inaccurate, if you ask me? <laughs> Jeff Goodgamer. Hey, what's going on, Jeff? You know what I like about this game is that it was like really impressive when it came out because the Atari before this game didn't have anything like this and uh, it was really hard for David Crane to actually program this. He had to do a lot of tricks and stuff to, to make it work but he was determined. I mean he was determined and when this game came out it was it blew everybody's socks off like they couldn't they couldn't believe it and I think everybody just like couldn't wait to get their hands on a copy and of course the uh, commercial for this game having Jack Black the young Jack Black little child doing the commercial probably was uh, you know a little child actor at the time I guess his parents were like shoehorning him into uh, anything they can get him on TV but yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can see that if you go on YouTube, you can look up the Pitfall commercial. You'll find Jack Black. <laughs> of course, today Jack Black has his uh, Jablinski Games YouTube channel now. I still don't understand why he did that, what that, what that's all about. I mean, I, I don't know. Just jumping on the whole Hollywood celebrities creating a YouTube channel. I think his channel was like over a million subscribers in like two, three days or something. Really insane. I mean, if you're already famous, it doesn't take much to build a YouTube channel. <laughs> Unlike us who have to work the grind and pump out videos only to watch a few hundred people, if we're lucky, watch our videos and, and if we're even more lucky, subscribe. <laughs> Then you know it's it's a little bit off-putting. I think you know I I see a lot of uh, YouTubers on, um, you know Twitter and all that, and some people are you know they they start getting upset because they're they're putting out videos and and nobody's watching them or they're not getting the subscribers and stuff, and then they see a celebrity come along and it's like a million subscribers. <laughs> they shouldn't be on YouTube. Well, you know. It's, it's one of those iffy things because the platform is for everyone, but um, it just, yeah, I mean, I just put it on a different level of, you know, th they're, they're famous, so they're not YouTube famous, they're famous famous. <laughs> like, uh, I think that was the complaint, what was it, that, uh, what was that thing for the, uh, 
end of the year where they do that YouTube thing to highlight the YouTube highlight or whatever. And people were upset because it was like Will Smith and a bunch of other celebrities and only like the really, really high profile and I was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> YouTube be YouTube. Of course, a lot of uh, a lot of us just don't care and just whatever. Just put out our videos regardless. <coughs> Try and oh no! Just walked into a pit there. I always wondered what was underneath that pit. Like, why doesn't he fall right through and, and hit that scorpion on the bottom there? Like, what's down there? I mean, the water might be shallow, and it's got some alligator, crocodile things in there. That that makes sense that, uh, you know, they eat you. But uh, just falling into the water, what's what's in there that kills him so fast? Like, Does he not know how to swim? Maybe that's it. Maybe he doesn't know how to swim. <coughs> hey, it's the No Swear Gamer. This game looks familiar. Yeah, it's kind of familiar. Although it ain't no tomboy. I mean, tomboy, now that's where the game's at. If you don't know what I'm talking about, tomboy was a, uh, was it South American release of this game, which was kind of like the sound is all off, and half the, the creatures are different, and I don't even think it has uh, underground walls or anything. Really horrible. I kind of feel sorry for the people of the world that got Tomboy instead of this. Whoa! So, a small spoiler alert for anybody who's uh, watching the stream right now, but my, um... Next uh, video release is going to be my awesome games from A to Z, and the letter is Q, and I got a little help from the No Swear Gamer on that one, so keep an eye out for that video. I, I'll probably launch it on Tuesday. Probably be my Tuesday video. But yeah, Q. <laughs> Try and think of as many video games that start with Q. And yes, we all know Qbert. Uh. Oh no! <laughs> I let go of the rope. And this is why I like to run from uh, right to left. Oh jeez, oh jeez! I don't like going down down there because usually you run into a wall or you have to jump over that crazy scorpion and I can't do it. But yeah, I always run from right to left because if you die you at least fall here and then you can just continue on. <laughs> if you go the other way... Qbert and Kicks are the only ones I know. Just stopping in for a moment. That's cool, though. Always nice to just have you stop by, even if it's for a few minutes. I have no men left. Literally, if I die, it's over. I don't know if I've ever played this long enough or made it to the point where I just ran out of time. I'm not sure. Usually I end up just dying. No. But yeah, you have to you have to master the undergrounds to, to actually get this game properly to to be able to beat this game, you know, get the highest score possible. It's the only way to do it is Oh jeez, no. I used to go left only person until I found the path to beat the game. <laughs> yeah, well once you know the pathway, then you don't have to. Also when you get good at it. Another favorite of mine. 
Never did get the cartridge for this one. Remember at one point I was... Oops. Start that again. At one point I was trying to find it on eBay. Um, but this game is, is usually not, uh, not the cheapest. This is Montezuma's Revenge. No! It's interesting how this version is so much different than, say, the, uh, the Sega Master System or the Commodore or some of the other ports of this game. I was quite fascinated when I first tried this. Though. I was like, you know, I didn't expect the Atari to have this game in the first place, and then when I, I didn't have much uh, expectations of it, then I started playing it, and I'm like, wow, this, this is on the Atari? <laughs> This is pretty decent. Quite impressed. The jumping is, is, is the hard part. And knowing which rooms to go in first. Because you need to get that torch. What is I just picked up right now, that's the torch. Without that, half the rooms are dark. You can't uh, find your way around. A little bit crazy, but... Ah, spider! No! Stupid spider. <laughs> spider is my next hated villain in all video games next to the bat. Especially jumping spiders. This one, I, I think you have to kind of go here. See, normally, ah, normally that room, is, this room is dark, and it's hard to see that snake. No! Now that was a death. Run, little guy. <laughs> yeah, let's let's play it safe. Well, I gotta go to sleep, gotta wake up early in the morning. Yep, so do I. <laughs> I think we all do. It's getting past our Betty by. We're all old now. Well, not all of us. No! Just ran into it. I played this a lot on my flashback, my, my uh, flashback portable. Um, when I had it. I, I don't know where it went. I'm still missing it. I, I, I need to... I don't know. It's, it might be in the basement somewhere. I don't know where it went. Don't. It's gone. <laughs> but yeah, I played this one a lot. <laughs> if you need more Q2600 games, just rename some Q14 Tomcat Quadventure, Cooperman. <laughs> no! Yeah, I'm losing a lot here. Alright. Just not, not getting this one. Just not getting it. Ah, I forgot about that. Ugh, too fast. The timing on these things are kind of crazy. It's like you think you got the pattern down, and then you're wrong. Kind of like when you have to jump over the skulls. Oops. It's always scary when you have to do that. I have Cubert's Cubes, but haven't really played it. Yeah, and that's expensive. <laughs> that is going to be in my video, too. But yeah, Cubert's Cubes. Kind of an expensive game. Not easy to get your hands on. 
Well, unless you want to spend a lot of money, of course. <laughs> you can get anything if, if you got the money. It's one thing I, I kind of mentioned in my video is that the, uh, quite a few of the Q games are expensive, for, for whatever reason. That's key. I think in this game they really only give you enough keys to really complete the level too. I don't think you can I don't think they give you like extra keys to oh jeez. No. Let's see. Although you can get extra men, but not extra keys. See, I just got an extra man there, because I killed the spider, because I had the sword. <laughs> oh. By the way, I'm planning to do an Intellivision review, and it's a game you've covered before. Oh, cool! Can't wait to see it! Anyways, I think I'm going to have to pack it in now. It's getting late. I tried to come on as uh, early as I could, but it was like, you know, by the time everything got settled in here, uh, it was already past 9 o'clock, so couldn't do a full-on, you know, hour-and-a-half stream like I've done in the past. But anyways, uh, lots of people came in, so thanks everybody for coming in. Thanks to Nosewear Gamer for coming in, giving a little bit piece of his time. Uh, we got James Campbell that was in here. I think he had to bail. He's, he had to go to bed. We had Mr. Toon. Jeff Goodgamer was in here. We had Carlsberg and the Magic Historian. What else did we have in here? Anybody I missed? Just kind of going through there. We had Jacob Downey in the chat. Jeff Fulton. Christopher Pico was in here. And Papa Pete. Papa, Papa Pete kind of came in in the beginning. And I think uh, we had... Who else? Xanile886. A lot of cool people in. Thanks everybody for coming in, and uh, maybe I'll see you on the next chat. And don't forget, my next video will be out on Tuesday, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the uh, my games would start with Q, unless something else pops up and I, I want to put it out for, you know, you never know. Sometimes videos just happen on the spur of the moment. Something breaks or some some news pops up or you never know anyways everybody ho hopefully have a good night